finally like like recently if you see totally ambrose he has applied for a bowling coach job with england and again there are several other great players like michael holding who is going on commentating in england and there are several former greats in the west indies who are not being utilized when west indies player is west indies cricket is actually struggling so what do you feel about it yeah so that that's that's a very big bone of contention um when i saw the news recurtly initially i was surprised um i mean curtly was coach when they won the the t20s the t20 world cup in 2016 um roddy estwick came back who's still in the setup now in terms of bowling coach so in some ways if i'm curtly i can see why you'd apply elsewhere because there isn't a position available many of the uh legends of the game who are in the caribbean have bemoaned the fact that they haven't been brought back in now i would say that historically that is due to the fact that the way west indies cricket was run from the top down meant that legends didn't feel that they could be part of west indies cricket with the new administration that took over in march of 2019 they have made it they have they have made a, a much more concerted effort to bring the legends in so for example um when they've when they did a review of all the systems and processes within cricket west indies people like Ramnaresh sarwan have come back into the fold uh, brian lara when actually it was when we when we played india at home at the end of 2019 both brian lara and Ramnaresh sarwan were brought back into the fold and president ricky skerritt said that cricket west indies needs to make more of an effort to engage with four greats and see where they can help out so i think that is changing it's disappointing that curtly want not disappointing not, that's not criticism of curtly it's disappointing that curtly has to now go and find uh or look for employment elsewhere but i'm hopeful that we can engage with more of the greats and find a way uh, to get them involved anywhere within the game Yeah, I completely agree with you, uh, Max Marshall. So, quickly moving on to the quiz. So, in 1993, Brian Lara scored his first century against Australia at the SCG. So, how much runs did he end up scoring and how was he dismissed? Is that the 200 one? Uh, when you say how was he dismissed, how or who? How was it dismissed? Oh no! <laughs> um, I've got a shot. I've got a shot that's running through my head, but I don't even know if it's that match. Let's I want to clue. say that he was caught. Let's give you a clue. Nobody got a wicket when he got out. Really? Nobody got a wicket. Well, he was run out. Yeah. That's it. I don't even. In that yeah, case, he was. He was um, in that case, then I'm, I'm probably mixing up the innings. Then was it? So it wasn't the two hundred. Then was it hundred and seventy something? I don't know. You're gonna have to tell me. It was two hundred and seventy-seven at the SCG, yeah. and it was run out. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Um, I. Uh, so I, I somehow, so I said two, I said 200, then I said 170 something. So I mixed them up. I nearly, I nearly, I nearly yeah. had to. <laughs> yeah. So at least we'll give the run out part to you, but you missed the first part of it. <laughs> yeah. So who was the first cricketer to play 100 matches, score 5,000 runs, also take 100 wickets and 100 catches in both test and one day matches? It should be in both tests. Wait, sorry, 100 wickets, 100 runs. 100, wait, what? 100 wickets. How many runs? 100 catches, 100 matches, 5,000 runs, 100 wickets, and 100 catches. I think it's Carl Hooper, but if it's not Carl Hooper, it has to be Carl Hooper. I'm going with Carl Hooper. It is Carl Hooper. Yeah, your favorite <laughs> player, and you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> So, who's the only batsman so far to 
to face 1000 consecutive deliveries without getting out shandapoom really yeah, you're right <laughs> brilliant <laughs> so this is the final question so who was uh, kimar ros 200 wicket and how did he get it was it on the england tour was it it was was it it was it was in the england tour is um one oh, trying to picture the right-handed batsman who was in that top order was it it was in 2020 um, yeah i'm just trying it to it was the, yeah okay i'm going to go it was in that landmark i'm, I'm, I'm going to go with one or two batsmen It, um, it was bold. Yeah, it was indeed bold. Yes, it was bold, and it was. I feel like it was a right-handed batsman. So I'm gonna have to go with either Ollie Pope or Dom Bess. No, it was Kasoks. Drag Don. Ah, uh, it was a right-handed batsman, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Listen, Marshi, this was absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for your time. We loved every minute of the conversation, and I'm sure our fans will thoroughly enjoy the Windies cricket perspective. And after the Bangladesh tour, I'm sure we will get in touch with you to bring you back on the post series analysis as well. Right. Thanks very much, and on behalf of entire Water Player team, thanks again for joining for this episode. Make sure. you subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode and remember we appreciate a comment go tell a friend or a family member about our show so that they too can spread a word feel free to follow us on twitter and thanks very much until then see you later thanks guys cheers guys